Tourette syndrome is deemed by the medical community as a genetic, neurological, involuntary, and incurable disorder. As you can see, though, I've been able to change that story. And now, with a new innovative technology called the rational inquiry, combined with tons of hard work, tons of determination on my part, and an amazing team of people, I have been able to literally overcome my Tourette's completely mind over body with no medicines, no gadgets, no machines. It's been crazy. You're like, should we clap? I don't know if you guys... Know. <laughs> Thank you. So we call it a technology, but the way that I understand it and experience it is it's a methodology that involves rationally questioning and evaluating your childhood beliefs. And when you actually see that, then you can actually change it. So what's so neat is, is that I was, it's kind of crazy to think about. I was able to, with this process, with this technology, I was able to rewire, reprogram, recondition, repattern my neural pathways to such a degree, I can now stand in front of you like this. Now, what's really neat about technologies is that technologies always get you something better, right? So if you get a better phone, you get more gadgets, like more things on it. If you get a better uh, computer, faster processing. So imagine that there was a technology that was actually geared for getting you specifically a better mind. A technology that could actually help you raise your consciousness, that you could build your self-awareness, that you could strengthen your decision-making, you could actually think more clearly, you could learn how to learn better, you could actually learn how to build your emotional intelligence and grow it. And that's what happened to me. That's why I don't have Tourette's syndrome. So if I can do that with Tourette's, something that people believe you cannot really change, imagine then that what that means is possible for everything that we know in our life that we know we can change. And I hope that by sharing my story today and what's happened to me, inspires what is possible for the human condition and demonstrates that our minds as an adult, our brain is not static, but rather something that we can continually evolve. Are you guys cool with that? Yeah. So instead of telling you more about my Tourette's, I actually just want to show you what my life used to be like. We're good. Um, um, and it, penis, penis, fuck, fuck, fuck. I have Tourette's, by the way, just to throw that out there, okay? <laughs> Yes, I have the world's strongest jaw. So my friends and I, we think we, we estimated that I ticked around 25 million times over the 20 years. Now, to help you understand how I got from there to here, I want to talk to you about your childhood, okay? So this is going to be a more interactive part. Who here, by show of hands, did you watch cartoons? How many of you loved your cartoons so much they were like your best friend? Right? Like you wanted to be them, like you could be them, right? Or how many of you had an object or something that you love, like a blankie? So I'm like, I had a blanket, right? And you would like kill for that blanket. You would like kill, right? You'd be like, yeah. Or how many of you believed in Santa Claus? I'm Jewish, but okay. <laughs> right? So right, we have these things as a little kid. And what's so interesting is that when we're a little kid, is that we don't understand what's really going on, right? 
We don't have full cognition. We're not rational. We don't have logic. Does this make sense? So we actually don't know what's the difference between what is reality and what is fantasy. They're all sort of the same thing. So at a time in our life when literally our best friend is Barney, a purple dinosaur that sings, that's our BFF, and at a time when adults are telling you things that are not true, at a time when you don't have logic, and at a time in your life where you have this type of innocence, where you believe in everything, at that same time, that is when we start to build our foundation, all of our beliefs, all of our, our emotional constitution about ourselves and the world. Are you with me? Foreshadow. This might make life a little interesting later on. And animals do this too. Do you guys know in a circus when an elephant isn't performing, what they do to keep it from running away? Do you know what they do? They chain it. So what they do is they tie a single chain around the elephant's foot, they tie it to a metal peg, and the elephant doesn't run away. Is this weird? I'll just answer for you, it is. It's weird because this is the largest land mammal in the world, it's 15,000 pounds, it just needs to do a pirouette and it's over. And it's free. So why does it not do that? Because when the elephant was a baby, what it did is that they, they tied that same chain around the elephant's foot, chine, tied it to the same metal peg, and of course, the elephant tried to get away and it can't. It tried to get away and it couldn't. And finally, after how many however many times it tried, at some point it decided that it never could break away. And literally, it created a belief in its mind that it wasn't possible. And now the elephant grows up to be the largest land mammal and is literally stuck by a single chain. But what's so interesting, it's not really the chain. It's just a belief in its mind. And we do this, we do this too. When I was a little kid, my brother told me uh, this story. My brother Brian, when we were, when we were younger, when we would go to a restaurant, they would bring us a salad, and of course the waiter comes up to you and says, would you like some fresh ground pepper? And my mom would say, no, 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 you guys don't like that. You won't like it. And we said, okay. And of course, restaurant after restaurant, salad after salad, they would always say, would you like it? And my mom would go, no, 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 no. You wouldn't like that. You wouldn't like it. And even after my mom wasn't there anymore, I continued to, to not get pepper on my salad because I just knew that I didn't like it, even though I never had tasted it. It never even touched my mouth. But hear the most innocuous statement from my mom, the most simple thing of, no, you won't like it, completely shaped all of my beliefs growing up around salads, around going out, around recipes, around cooking food, so much so that even when a friend would put pepper on their pizza, anyone do that? When they would do that, I couldn't understand because that was so gross. Never even tried it. So how many things do you think that you were told as a little kid? How many things did you experience? How many rules were you told that you still live with today that might be just as untrue as Santa Claus? And you have no idea. So let me tell you about my Tourette's. Now when I was a little kid, my brothers, my little brothers here too, we didn't call it Tourette's in the beginning. No, I didn't have Tourette's syndrome, I just had habits. We call them Mark's habits. Who here has habits? Everyone's got little habits, right? We got little habits, and the thing is, is that I had this uncomfortable feeling in my body, this itch. And the way that I describe Tourette's is that there's this itch, this uncomfortable feeling, and then what you see me doing is actually scratching that itch. Does that make sense? So there's the itch and the scratch. And when I was a little kid, I just had this uncomfortable feeling. And so what do you think you do? Or what do most kids do when you're uncomfortable, when you're a little kid? What do you do? You try to get rid of the discomfort, right? So I started to do these things to get rid of that discomfort, the eye blinking, the sniffing, and all that. And it was weird. You can just raise your hand. Who thought it was weird? Come on, who thought it was weird? It was weird stuff. It was weird to me. It was annoying to myself, and it was also annoying to other people, but that was really it. There was no other problem. And then, my parents at some point decided to take me to a doctor because they thought something was wrong. And I remember going to the doctor's office 
and they do the examination, and afterwards, the only thing that I remember is that at some point, the doctor said to me, you have Tourette syndrome, a neurological genetic disorder that's involuntary and has no cure. You have Tourette syndrome, a neurological genetic disorder that's involuntary and has no cure. What do you think I did? I believed it. I believed exactly what the doctor told me. I believed my mom with the pepper. I mean, they were the authority figures, right? They told me something, I believed it. Why would I ever, why would I ever question that? And for 20 years and 25 million ticks, I lived with the story of Tourette syndrome. You see, believing that I couldn't change it, believing that it was incurable, believing that it was involuntary, that's what held me back, just like the chain on the elephant. And it wasn't until I challenged that belief, can I now live like this? And I don't know if that's the case for other people with Tourette's, but I for sure as hell know that's the case for me. So the question is, how do you change something like that? How do you change something that is so deeply embedded into our psyche, something, something that's so a part of you? How do you change something like Santa Claus when you don't even know it's a story? How do you do that? How do, you, how do I start just to like pepper? I hated pepper, like in every fiber of my body. Never touched it, but I don't like it. How do you change something like that? Do you have something in your life that you can think of like that? I'm getting no nods, okay. And until a few years ago, I didn't, not only did I not know how, I didn't believe it was possible. But a few years back, I ended up taking these amazing classes right here in New York City on emotional intelligence and breaking limiting beliefs called executive success programs. And it was created by an American scientist, a philosopher, a mathematician. His name is Keith Ranieri and his protege, Nancy Salzman. And they developed a process to actually help you break these beliefs on a very deep, on a very deep level. Keith Ranieri developed a scientific process that allows you to basically examine systematically these beliefs and break them one on one. And because of them, I no longer have Tourette's. I'm incredibly grateful. But understand what this means. This means that we can now proactively change. You can proactively change your conditioning. You can proactively not just be the effect of your conditioning growing up. And think about what this means is possible. Remember my fresh ground pepper story? All with me on that one still? Maybe you weren't told about Pepper, but I bet you had other Pepper stories. People told you the way that you have to think, the way that you have to be, what rules to follow, how rich you'll be, how rich you won't be, what dreams you can have, what dreams you can't have, how to relate to sex, how to relate to your family. They told you what to think about people with Tourette's, what to think about people who are different, People growing up told you what to think about white people and black people and Muslims, religious people and gay people, poor people and rich people, and everything in between. A group of people that you just don't like, even though you've never met them. You don't even know anything about them, just like how I never tried pepper. And imagine, imagine if it was just as easy, imagine if we could change this, that we could just say, hey, Mark, you should just like the pepper. Just try it. You'll like it. That would be so easy, right? The world would be so different. Imagine, imagine if you could just tell someone, well, you should just be okay with someone with Tourette's, and they were just okay. Or imagine you could just tell someone, well, you should be mo mo more motivated, and they're more motivated, just like that. Imagine if you could just tell somebody, you should be, you should be faster, you should be stronger, you should be okay with Tourette's. You should be okay with people who are different. You should be okay with white people and black people and Muslims and gay people. You should be okay with your mom, your grandmother, your neighbor. That would be so, the world would be so different if it was just that easy. But it doesn't account, it doesn't take into account our lack of understanding of the mind-body connection. It doesn't take into account all of our own unique conditioning as an individual, and it doesn't take into account 
our lack of understanding of emotional intelligence. But what is so amazing is that now that can change. And there is a technology that can unlock all of that. Through rational inquiry, it's a technology that can unlock it to such a degree that I don't have Tourette's anymore. And if I can do that with my mind, if I have Tourette's and I can change that, what does that mean is possible for me? What does that mean is possible for all of us? Imagine. Imagine what it would mean with respect to changing behaviors, with respect to changing relationships, goals, motivation, love, conflict resolution, peace. So to wrap this up, the question is, do you want to wake up? Do you want to keep walking around your life with all those same pepper stories? Or do you want to evolve? Do we want to evolve? Do we want to grow up and actually strive to be better people? Like when you turn on the TV, how many of you, show of hands, when you turn on the TV, do you say to yourself, is this really the best that we can do in our world right now? Is this the best? I'll do a quick demonstration. Can you all stand up for me? Very quickly, I've got about 20 seconds. <laughs> on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand as high as you can, and then afterwards, you'll put it down. As high as you can. One, two, three, go. You there? A Little bit higher? A Little bit higher? Okay, put it down. My question to you is, why didn't you raise it as high, as high as you could the first time? And how does that relate to peace on earth and goodwill to all? Thank you so much.